code of Happy Bank. In this particular case, how do I open up every single page that is available in uh, Happy Bank and how do I open up on the web browser? And how, in a way, do I then, for example, take screenshots of that particular thing so that I can embed that as part of my tests? So what I can see is I, I have Happy Bank, so let me just grab the source code. I got it here. So um, where is it open? Okay, so here is the source code of, for example, the website. So on this page, I have the source code of the website. So here's what we're going to do. Basically, I'm going to create a mini tool that is going to parse the file system, find all the SPX pages, and show them the source code to it first, and then actually show the website. And I'm going to basically do it in a couple of minutes. And in a way, the, the power of this is the fact that I'm going to be able to do this stuff at this kind of speed, and also um, with this kind of, of interactivity. And then this is kind of a Windows tool, and then I'm going to do the same thing for, for, for the web interface. So, okay, so it all starts with a file path, right? So here's the file path of the, the particular um, folder, and you can see that at the moment I am going like this. And to, to, to and by the way, that you can put messages in there, and, and Kate is on, on online, and and please feel free to ask questions or raise your hand and stuff like that. And and if I'm going too fast, you know, please let me know. And um, and you know, please uh, ask stuff. All right. So you could see that what I've done was I grabbed my link file variable, and this is kind of C sharp. Uh, it's a very kind of fat, you know, it's a curated version of C sharp with a bunch of extension methods. So you can see I got my file path in there. Now. One of the things you've got here on this environment, so this environment is the top is like a panel that you can play around with it. This is the script that is executing, and this here is the result. So if I go to result file path, you can then see that I get the feedback here, right? So I just got the, the content of the variable. If I go like that, oops. If I go like that, I get just, of course, the string content. Now, one of the things I've done here is I, I kind of went to some jQuery typey kind of fluent chart, and I've added a huge amount of extension methods. Like, as you can see, file path is the string, but there's a whole bunch of extension methods here that don't exist there. For example, files. So files is the extension method that returns all the files that currently exist on that particular string. So it assumes that file path is actually a string, a path, so basically it gives me the files. So if I want the file names, I just go dot file names, and you can see the kind of IntelliSense gives a bit of a help, so now I've got all the file names of there. Now, actually, what we wanted was we actually want a recursive search. So again, a recursive search. You can see how immediate feedback we have. It's pretty fast. And in this case, I actually want the ASPX pages. So I actually want just the um, dot ASPX. And there we go. Oops. Uh, oh. oh, of course, there's a thing there. There you go. That's all my ASPX pages recursively on this particular website. And if I wanted, for example, the ASMX, I could also go start.asmx. And, and now we'll get all of those, which actually, actually they are one folder up. So if, if I go dot parent, parent folder. So you can see that how interactive the whole thing is, right? So there you go. I picked up a couple of um, web services that we'll, we'll go to those in a second. So now I got a couple of web pages, right, in this particular site that exists here. So what I want to do is instead of showing them here, I want to show them the main GUI. So instead of a text box, what I want to do, I'm going to create a tree view. I'm going to go top panel, add tree view, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add bar files. So this is my files, and then I'm going to go tree view, add nodes files. So you can see that. You know, basically, what I'm doing is I am. Uh, do, 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 do. That's funny. Not a space in this. What? Uh, okay. First, first gremlins of the demo. So I don't have enough space in this to compile this thing. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. I got it. Yeah. So I should just that preview. There you go. Okay. So now that should work. Okay. That worked. And now I got tree view, top panel, at tree view, tree view, OK, return, OK. And there you go. All right, so you can see that I now got a tree view at the top with 
the contents of my files. So one of the things you do with this is you, and this is kind of a key concept of the O2 platform, right, is you program almost at the speed that you think. So the way you, you look at this and going, well, that's all cool, I have a tree view, but can I then have, uh, you know, I want to see the source code of those particular files, right? And in fact, at the moment, let's actually just put all the full file packs in there so there's a full pop, the, the file packs. So what I can do is I can go into my tree view and I can say, var code, actually, let's, let's, let's put in the text box. I can go tree view dot insert, and you can see above, left, right, so I'm going to go insert right. And, and what this does is this actually inserted right uh, a little panel, right, which you can title if you want. You can say source, uh, source codes, and now you can see that little title there. And then in this case, if we actually add a text area, you see that we actually have um, now source code. So now we've got a little source code editor there that we can use. Next thing we want to do is we want to get basically going to say after select, and this is kind of now C sharp for the kind of lambda callback. So this is basically a callback that is going to be executed every time I select. So in fact, if I just go file dot info, oops, uh, info, and that's a string, then you get to see that now every time if you look at the bottom there. I, you know, info is just basically a nice way to, to put messages. If you type that dot debug, you get a green thing. If you see at the bottom, and if you go dot error, you get a nice little red dude. There you go, right? But you can see that I get a little event every time I click a select. In fact, you can automate this by just going um, select first, right? So you can go select first, and then that will actually automatically execute it as soon as the thing starts. So we don't want that to really what we want, we want to go to the text box, we want to put some information in there, so in this case I'm going to go set text, and just to double check, you can see that now my file name is actually showing there every time I click on this. What I really want is file contents, right, uh, file contents, and basically what we now have here is you can see that I actually have the file contents, right, of uh, my particular page. But of course we don't really want it like that. We want a code viewer and we want to go add uh, so to, to tell a sense we want source code editor or viewer so it depends how, how many options you want. So the code viewer now is an our code viewer ta, 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 ta. okay now it's called code viewer, code viewer. We can actually now open the file because it's actually a file open and now we get a nice little source code. So that's pretty cool because what we actually have now is basically quickly a way to view the source code of the particular page that I'm actually looking at. And, and in fact, one of the things that, and, and this is also quite relevant, you know, actually you, you'll see that there's actually a lot more meat in here. And a lot of the meat is also on the .cs pages. So for example, if you wanted to say, I actually want to see the .cs pages, you can go code viewer, I'm going to insert right, so this is going to be the ASPX, that is going to be the C sharp page, and now you see that actually what I've done was actually insert another code viewer to the right, and uh, 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 so actually what I could do is, let me just clean this a little bit, actually that's fine, it shows one inside the other, so and then what I want to do is I'm going to basically go um, code viewer CS and then open file plus or you know append uh, dot CS and that basically should now show the if it exists uh, the C sharp file uh, in there see so in fact you could see that one of the things we probably want to do is just check the file exists so file CS equals File plus dot cs, and then we can just go if file dot cs exists, then you do that. If it doesn't, we can basically go and we can say set text file doesn't exist, and then format, and then you go file cs dot file name. All right. So now what you can see is that 
what we've done was we have a file CS that now has a dot extension CS. We open that guy there. We check if it exists, and if it doesn't exist, we just show the little message that says, uh, by the way, you know, you need to, you know, that file doesn't exist. So you can see the default SPX doesn't exist, but the actual other one exists. So this is quite useful because, again, you know, if I want to see what's going on in those pages, I kind of want to see the code behind. Okay, now this is still not good enough because what we now want is we want to see the web browser, right? So what we're going to do now is we're going to add a web browser to the top of this. So basically, what we're going to do is we're going to go to our first, let's say, our code viewer, which is here, and we're going to go var browser equals uh, code viewer, and then we're going to go insert above, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to call the guy web browser, and I'm going to add a web browser. Okay, so now let's see where it is. Okay, so it's kind of here, not really what I wanted because I wanted to be above the other one. So let's see if I move this guy up. That's better. So you can see now what I have here, in fact, if I just go like that, move one up, it will look a little bit better. There you go. All right. Oop, no, no, oh, exactly what I wanted. So let me go pound one more. And I want it to be above. There you go. So now you can see web browser, source ASPX. So actually if I go now on this one and go one to the parent, and what's really cool about this is you can see that I'm basically describing the, um, what I want to do. And I'm basically almost coding at the speed of the questions I'm asking. So you can see now I've got a web browser, source code, source code C-sharp. Now the next thing is to actually map the URL. So now you go ahead and you grab the URL here. And you can see this is where the real world always has little things because it's never that simple. So now you've got the URL template or path, which is basically that one. And kind of what we need now to do is we, we're going to have to normalize the path, right? So we're going to go to have to go and say var full URL equals, so it's going to be the URL path probably plus the file, the file name. So we, and then in fact, what we can do here, we can just quickly just play around with it, show it on the code viewer, so we can see that we actually got the URL correctly. So it's very, very quick to do this. So what I, what I just done was I'm actually now putting on my, do, 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 what's going on here? Oh, here you go. So you can see I'm putting on my code viewer uh, the actual URL that's been resolved. Right? So you can see that you got my URL resolved, but you can see that it's not correct because I actually need to take the path out because login is actually further down. So what I need to do is I need to go to my file path and I need to basically, instead of file name, I'm going to go remove file path, right? And now let's see what happens here, and then I can go ASCX to bug. In fact, actually, another cool way of doing this, just remember, instead of going there, you can just go browser dot, uh, I think it's show message, there you go, and that actually will show the, the thingy as a little message in the URL, so you get to see here. Oh, there you go. Do, 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 browser. All right. So this, actually, what happened here, right? This actually hanged, and this is an this is an interesting one. And the reason it hanged is because it's actually a thread conflict. We'll last a couple of seconds and I'll explain the problem. So there's a couple of times you'll probably find this, and the reason it is is because this is actually running on a multi, on a separate thread, and there's a couple of cases where you know I actually basically have to make sure that every single request happens on a GUI thread, which is something really annoying on kind of GUI programming. But uh, in, in most of the times it works perfectly, but you can see in this case, it, it had a little little kind of thing, right? So what we need to do is we just need to make sure that in this case, we show that on a different thread. And when we open the page, we're actually going to need to open it in a sync format so that it actually works okay. So you, and now going back to this guy here, you get to see that um, what we actually have now is, can you see that it's got resolved? But in fact, the other thing we need to do is we have a trailing, a, a trailing little uh, forward slash, and we're actually going to have to do a force resolve the first, uh, the double step, the forward slash and the backslash. So first of all, I'm just going to, I can just run this guy on a separate thread, which should solve me that locking problem I just had. There you go. See, it was immediate. And now I'm going to have to fix this guy. So one of the things I can do is I can go replace. Uh, replace, and I can replace the backslash 
with the, the forward slash shoots. So that now should put me everything forward slash and probably just another one I, I can go or I can probably replace replace two forward slashes with one. And and again, like this is all the little things that always happen when you're doing these kind of things that it's very, very important that you are able to actually address it or else um, you know, uh, what's it called? You know, you can't really fix um, all these things because you have to be able to script it. Script it, right? There's always little things to do. Okay, so you can see now my URL is great. So what I can do now is I can go browser the, and this is kind of important where you're going to have to open a sync on this one. So it's actually not sync uh, in, in a sync way. So fuel URL, and now you get to see that now I should be able to see the page. Let's add a navigation bar just to double check we're not doing something silly and do, 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 full URL uh, loading hmm. why aren't you opening do, 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 do. let me just put an info here and localhost help me bank so you should open uh, it might be are you complaining? Let me just double check here. What's wrong with you? Okay, so you work fine there. Hey, no mouse. So where's my ah gremlins? So that guy should show up there, and not sure why he's not showing. And um. Unless there's kind of like my IE compatibility mode or some security stuff going on here, but um, anyway, now for now, assume that I will show up there, right? Because I have a lot of stuff I want to show you guys. Um, so and I'll come back to that in a second because I'll double check something before. And uh, help me bank website default. Oh, oh, another problem. Ah, can you guys spot the bug? The bug is that I'm actually. Um, if you okay, I found it. If you look at the URL, what I actually did was I actually have a single. I removed the the the, the two four slashes, so actually my fault. So if you see here, um, the problem is that in my effort to remove the second, right, I actually also removed the first one. So let's do this a little bit different. So let me actually just go here and I go removed first character, and now I shouldn't need that guy and then okay for two there one there and if I open up my browser this should now work there you go all right cool so now you can see that I got my happy bank there nice and loaded and uh, oh yeah there you go <laughs> um, when it says missing thing okay picked it up all right so now that is basically and thanks for the guy who just made that note right and thanks Kate for <laughs> putting out there. So this is now working. And now you can see that I open up these guys. One of the things you can clean up is actually a better one. Instead of go add nodes, you can go add files. And what it does, it actually does it a little bit better because it actually does it based on the um, on the um, it kind of just puts the file name there. So it's kind of a bit cleaner, right? And then the other thing we can do is at tree view when we insert it right, we can also put a path, a size on it. So now you can see whoops. Uh, actually, that was the, the right of the thing, so I can say 600, so there you go, or maybe 800, 900, okay, so now we've got a bigger path, usually you probably would want to do the other way around, um, okay, so now you can see that I got my nice little script, now, and, and you see, so basically, the point here is that this is, this is a mini tool, right, and you can see how powerful this will be, even for a website, and even what's interesting about this is you can see that I already found a couple of dodgy pages, right, stuff that probably, shouldn't be exposed, right? But it is, right? This is actually a, a nice serious vulnerability on Happy Bank that you wouldn't know or you wouldn't be able to test it. Now, if you know at the top, I did my top panel, right? The reason I did it like that is because once you've finished, instead of using this guy, you can use a pop-up. And I'll just actually pause a second. When you do top panel equals a pop-up window, in this case, what it's actually doing is open the Windows form and you can see the name the name is this guy here. So this is basically Hackney Bank files, right? And then, you know, the 700 and the F400 is, is the width. 
So on the height, so I can go maybe like you know, a nice 1200 or 1300, can have a bigger screen, there you go, and maybe a, a kind of a 600. So again, so now you have a mini tool, and once, you know, basically without, I go like this, you now have a mini tool that basically um, is able to show you this information, right? Now, in, and you can now save this, so if I go current source code, if I save it, and I basically, let's say, I create a new folder, a new folder, and I can go, you know, test scripts. So, so now if you just save this and, and you send hack, you know, this is a util, so go hack uh, me bank, right, we got okay. And this is kind of, you know, as code and web viewer, okay? Okay, so now you can see that now you've got a little um, file, and this file is basically what I call an H2 file, and it's literally just, um, you know, uh, what's it called, the code. So if somebody else that you're working with has or two, right, you can just send him this, this file and he'll basically be able to just execute it, right, in or two, right, so which is, which is pretty cool, right, because it actually, you know, it's a nice way to, um, to kind of distribute files. Yeah, this is what, one of the problems, you know, and one request I had last year was, okay, but what happens if the guy doesn't have a boot, right? So one of the things you've got now, which is pretty cool, is this package current script has a standalone executable. And what it's going to do is it's going to create a standalone exe that has all the dependencies required on this, and run an executable with no temporary files. Right? So you can see here, now you've got this, this file here, and it's a bit bigger because you have the source code editor, usually it will be 700k. And now if you double-click on it, you get your tool being executed. Right? You know, and and basically, you can see that now the tool is literally a standalone executable that you can send somebody, or you can have on, in, you know, on an internal um, web repository, and then it allows you to do this kind of stuff, right? So, okay, so now this is kind of the fundamental, right? But basically, what we have here is we have the ability to ask a question which has secure implications. What um, files currently are available for anonymous users? And I was able to very, very quickly create a tool that represents that in this kind of environment. So um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you a bunch of other tools that were created with the same concept that are all scripts that basically allow you to basically have this kind of environment um, sort of um, available to you, right? And then I'm also going to do a very quick one. I'm also going to show you how to um, automate this from the website. So because this, this, this example here was, it's basically um, a Windows tool, right? The next thing we want to do is we want to automate the, the web stuff. So if you want to automate the web stuff, uh, actually, just before I do that, let me just show you a cool example. So if a lot of the stuff in O2 is basically scripts, and the best way to do is find scripts. So a, a cool script is this guy here, which is basically going to show a variation of that tool, for example, to find um, SQL injection and to first SQL injection in, you know, for example, auto or neutral. Right. So here you could see that what I'm doing is I wrote a little tool, and I'll show the source code. Actually, I'll show the source code now. Right. So this is the source code of that tool that is running now. Right. And what the tool is doing is basically for is basically going is doing a login and is basically going to the first database and fuzzing that page and taking a screenshot for a request. And you could see that the source code is actually reasonably simple. Because basically what you have is you have the first DB. Here's the code that does the web automation. You can see it's pretty easy. Login. It's, it's, this is like Selenium, but kind of even more simplified. It's using Wathin. It's a pretty powerful. You can see field, user name, use a password, login. And then you basically log into stuff. And then here is where I import the first date database. I get all the SQL injections. And then I basically go through all of them. And I just quickly check out if, if the error actually shows information. So this is pretty cool because what I actually now have is I have a screenshot, right, of every single uh, request that it happens. Okay, it doesn't help if you actually have another video on, on top, which I had, but uh, but you can see that I basically now created a whole bunch of screenshots, right, for every single one of these requests, and I can s serialize it, and I can actually create a nice little list, right, with information about it, and every single one of those um, scripts is now available, you know, all the screenshots is now actually here, 
and and basically, oops, uh, where are you? Oh, it doesn't have a thingy. And so, so you could see that I got all my images there, right? And then, you know, if you wanted to, um, where's my images? Wait, sorry. And there you go. So that's all the images available here from the screenshot. So if you, if you there's also actually a way to export. You can copy them all up to one place. But it's quite cool. So basically, you can see that I got all my stuff, you know, in a nice place and saved, etc. So that's a pretty cool tool that was created with O2. There's a variation of this um, that detects cross-site scripting. So this is runs the same thing, but actually, you know, tries to do cross-site scripting. And um, and basically, so and this is just to show the API of the first database. So the first database is pretty cool because it basically allows you to actually, um, you know, send a huge amount of bad data into the particular thing. All right. So now let's grab Pammy Bank, right? And let's do a similar thing for web automation. So what I'm going to do is I'm basically going to write a similar script as the one I wrote before, but I'm going to write it for automation. So you can come in here if you grab the I script, and this is basically has a nice environment to creating. Um, working scripts. So what I'm going to do is I'm basically going to, uh, and you can see the little script example, you know, there's a search on Google, so I don't need any of this stuff. And um, actually, this is a, finally, this is a, a really cool example. Look, I got all the links, I got the URIs, and I got all the values that belong to the image URL, which is actually all the current links. So it's actually a nice way to parse, because if you take away this guy, what you get is just actually the raw uh, Google links, which contain all this information, right? Which is not what we wanted. All right, so let's let's now do the same thing. So uh, not URL. Okay, so this is going to be my Hatme Bank uh, thing, and I'm going to do the exact same script for um, what's it called for Hatme Bank based on the. Um, da, 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 there we go. Based on the, the actual automation. So before I actually showed you how to do automation on uh, the kind of Windows version, and now I'm going to show you how to do automation on the actual web. And if you now looking for uh, the APIs, uh, a, a nice way to find this is if you go show O2 object model. So this is a nice way to actually see all the methods available. So if you want to see, for example, all the string extension methods that have to do with I/O. And you know you you can see them here. If you're looking for stuff to do with what in, you can find them here, right? So it kind of uh, it's a, it's a nice way to see. So there's all extension methods for what in. You can see the extension methods to do images, JavaScript, radio buttons, select wind forms, yeah, the other other. There's a whole bunch of stuff. And and Alex, I'm not sure if he's on the, on the audio, but he's he's doing some good stuff. And Alex has actually been starting um, a book on O2. So if you go, and I will link this from the main website. That is actually, um, and of course, it is open source. Everything I'm showing you guys here is open source. So if you look at this book for web automation, what he has started to do is he started to document uh, how to do it, how to actually link, and etc. So this is actually quite a cool um, little, you know, kind of book and full of examples of actually how to do stuff, how to grab links, posts, scrolling, etc. Interfaces, saving data, etc. So it's a pretty cool little book that he has. All right now. And of course, if you guys can help, it would be great. You know, we want, our, you know, we want to publish that so we can help more people to use it too. So now, what I'm going to do here is you can see that um, uh, I got my uh, browser, right? So now you can see that I have my environment. So now you get TXT password and username. So those are the two fields that are there. So you can come in here. You can basically copy that clipboard, and um, and basically. What I'm going to do is you can go ie.fields, and now you can put a value in there, right? So now you can see that I put a value in there, and there's my password. And now if I do the same thing for my username, I got my username. So now you can see I got values on both. If I now go create two fields, username equals jv, var password equals uh, password. And now if I go username, and I put my username there, and I put my password there. You now see that I populated the field. So now, if you go IE dot uh, buttons, let's see if you find the submit button. And one one way to 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 look at that is if you go if you return uh, IE button submit. So if you get a value, it means you found it. There you go. We found the button. 
So that means that we can now, so a nice little trick is you can flash it, that just kind of the little sort of, you know, flashy thing, you can see that there's the button there, and, and then you can click on it, right? So now you can see that I'm going to flash and then click on the dude, right? Which is, if I log in, right? And, and it's also, so when you're doing demos, it's actually really cool to do this, where you basically allow the user to, to redirect his eyes to where you actually are going to um, uh, move to change. You see, there's a thing, there's a password, and there's a submit. Now, of course, that when, you, when you're executing this, you actually want to disable flashing because you want to make sure that you're running as fast as you want, like that, okay? All right, now you can see that I got you know, a nice little almost way to do this. What you now want to do is create a Lambda method, which is this, which you call login, and, and basically what this is, is basically now a and, and method to log my user. Right, so now you can see that what I now have, and you don't need those two fields. And now what you can do is you now have a method called login, where you can go username, password, and oh, of course, sorry, uh, you, uh, this is JV, and this is JV789, and now to, 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 to username and here we go. So you can see that immediate, so this is again a little mini tool to just quickly automatically log in into the, the actual application, right? Which is now you can see that I will expand this. And in fact, if you go to your two platform and you search for Hami Bank, you get to see the next evolution of this. Because the next evolution of this is when you actually create a script like this one. So you can also say, one of the things you can do is you can also save the, these files into normal C-sharp files, and you can do them in Visual Studio if you wanted. And, and then what you can do is you can actually start to create the APIs like this. So, so the power of this is that I now have basically uh, an API that what I could do is if I import this file, and if, because it's on a O2 scripts, I can just go like this. I can just go O2 file, I can import it, and basically, that means that you know, I, if I once I've added the namespace and in O2, these little comments matter because that's a way of of telling the compiler what needs to be done. So you can see if I put the new namespace on, now I can go var hack uh, me bank API, right? And now I can go new, and there's my me bank API, and I need to pass my what in reference, which is that guy there. Uh, isn't it? Uh, let me see. Oh, I need to put the website port, which is going to be 21614. So there you go. And now, what in? Oh, is a string? Really? It is a string. Could be mint. Okay, so there you go. 214. And now you can see that I got my Hatme Bank API here, right? Return Hatme Bank API. And what this should do is I can now consume it. So there you go. See, there's my Hangar Bank API. So what I can do now is I can basically go, if I disable this and that, that, I should just be able to go log in. So you can see, look, log in, log in page, log in to admin section. So all of these are the methods that are here, right? And you can actually see the ID that the guy wants to do. So basically, what I've done now is I have now an API that allows me to navigate. So, for example, I can go, all right, I want to log out, right? So I want to log in into the admin page, right? So this is basically going to log me in into the admin section, which actually is pretty tricky because if you look at this Jeff function, you have to first call this admin section, which basically means that I actually have to log in, right? So if I log out, you'll see that you're going to, you're going to go through the whole sequence of events of, in this case, I have to log in and then go to the right place, and then go to the admin section, right? Which, I, which just happened, and basically uh, you can see the admin section. Actually, you need to grab the value from the view state, put it there, and then log in, right? Which is actually pretty cool. So, so now you can see how you now have an API to manage this stuff, right? So that's the other part. And, and of course, just going back to that particular, just actually showing this example here, when I got my little login, um, if you then wanted to make this into a particular standalone tool, so this basically just shows you 
the, the login sequence, you can go package a standalone thing. Uh, oh, and of course, when you, when you do the package as standalone, you have to actually have, this is a, a, a problem you get, you can't use panel, you have to use basically, in a way, the top panel, right? Or you have to actually create a, a new thing. So I need to go IE, I need to go hack the bank login, and then I get to go um, pop up window, and I go add an IE. So now this see, opens up on a pop up window, and now if you package this guy, so the, what just happened was I had a compilation error because I actually didn't have the actual guy uh, isolated on the pop up. So you can see that I just basically created a mini tool that now pops up, right? This and logs me in. So you can see that this, this will be very, very useful for QA, right? This will be very useful for all sorts of other uh, things, not just, you know, uh, these kind of things. All right. Any, let me know if you have any questions because I still have a bunch of stuff I want to show you. So, so far I showed you how to create mini tools which have GUI stuff, and I also show you how to actually create web-based tools, which I think is the easiest one for you guys to get involved in this and to get your head around your two scripts, which, which actually are full-blown C-sharp. So if you go and see the generated source code, you can see that what you actually have here is basically the, the code that you write there is basically code that is, is here. So this is actually the code that's executed, which is basically a normal C-sharp method. Right, uh, which actually, so I basically pad these guys, right? So I want to show you now a couple of more advanced tools. And, uh, and one of them I want to show you is the ability that you, you have to inject yourself, right, into other processes. Actually, I think the link is actually already here, inject or two and two, right? So, um, so basically what you have here uh, is, uh, t -t -t let's make sure I've got Snoop there, uh, oh, I think this version had a bug, so let me use this one, uh, inject, oops, and by the way, the screenshot tool is pretty cool, right, it's actually a little tool to make screenshots, so double click, make screenshots, very useful. Um, all right, so what, what you got here, right, is basically a pretty cool tool that allows me to inject O2 into another process, right? So let me show you how that works, right? So basically the way it works is um, you see that I just opened LinkPad, right? So you've got LinkPad here. So this is amazing if you're doing client-side .NET testing, right? But it also works a bit for Java and not as many for C++, but .NET is amazing. So you can see that what I've done, just recapping, I fired up LinkPad, I select this guy, I did inject O2 into the process, which is this one. So now you can see that my little repo is not working inside there, right? So you can see the logo. And, and just to double check, right, if I now go here and I basically go return uh, application dot open forms, right, you get to see that I now have two applications, right, two open forms. I got link pad and I got, um, you know, O2, right? So you get to see there's my link pad. Now, why is this cool? The reason this is cool is because I have real-time control over LinkPad. See there? This is like link, you know, dot .NET, or like hello, dot .NET process. So you can see that I can change it completely, but, but it's kind of more than that, right? So I can go var uh, main form, and you cast this to form. And what I have now is I can actually go main form dot, I can actually get all the controls. Right, so I can now use all the O2 stuff to actually get control. So this is the top level control. If I go true, right, I now have every single control that exists in Impact. Right? If you want to make everything pink for the female audience, you go like that. Right? There you go. You've got a pink version of of um, of link of of, of uh, Linkpad, Right? And and the other things you can also do is okay. Make me a zero for now on the Microsoft theme. And now the other thing you can do is you can also inject stuff. So you can see that I can also go insert right. So I'm going to actually below, right? Probably. Let's go below. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert below and I'm going to add script environment, right? And basically what this is, I'm going to insert the O2 scripting environment in LinkPad, right? So now you get to see that I can now do the same thing from here, right? So if I now go and grab main form, I'm now actually coding right, uh, uh, what's it called, link pad from 
link pad, right? It's pretty cool, right? So you can see that uh, if I want to add a new menu, I go main form, uh, main menu, add menu, and now, you know, a new menu, and this should actually, there you go, actually, they, they were actually using a different, but you can see there's my new menu, right? And uh, uh, add menu item, and now you can see that, you know, another menu item. And there you go, a new menu, the menu item, AA. So this is cool, um, but what's, where, where this gets really interesting is when you use this to attack another application. So instead of injecting to LinkPad, what we're going to do is I have here uh, running stock trader application, is a, is a, is a, uh, basically an application that Microsoft developed to show stock trades, right? And, and what's really cool about this, right, is that basically uh, this is the client application, right? So this is basically the client application of the, the stock trader app that actually connects to uh, this guy here. So basically, so there's a web app, and then there is, you know, um, a web app. So this is the web app, this is the, the, the WPF app. And, and you can see that you know, I can go here, and I can connect, and I'm going to log in as user ID 10 or 20 XXX, and I'm logged in. So now you get to see, look, I, got, I now have user 20, right? And, and basically, I got information of user 20. Now, what we're going to do is, the vulnerability here is a vulnerability where um, I'm basically going to uh, inject myself into this process and then manipulate it from the inside, right? So if you go into O2, inject into, uh, oops, not that one, where's my O2 do? There you go. So what I'm going to do is to refresh this, you see the stock trade uh, there, Right? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same thing. So I'm going to inject 02, it's 32 bits, into there. And now what's really good about this is I'm now running in the same process. So if you go processes dot uh, current process, you get to see that we actually are on the same process. And, and if you're doing WPF, it's not as straightforward. There's a bunch of WPF APIs, but you can see that we actually are on the stock trader process, right? And now what's really cool about this is I've got a couple of scripts so I can very quickly show you. Uh, or two scripts. Uh, here we go. Uh, come back now. Okay. All right. So what I'm going to do is now that we have this, see, we can now import all the DLLs that belong and we can invoke stuff directly. So you can see that I'm actually invoking the web services. It's a bit like imagine the stock trade is a zombie, so I'm actually invoking it from there, which of course. It's interesting, but what gets, gets really interesting is I can actually get the user object. So this is actually the user object of this guy, and basically what, it, what this is, and, and, and the punchline is that if I change, note that we are user 20, right? So if you go account, user 20, if I change this to user 21, I now just became user 21, right? So basically what I've done was it's, this is like basically going there and says, hey, I'm somebody else, and now I just became another user. And the reason this is like that is because um, the application is not checking that the user is who it is. Right? So it's basically typical authorization and session manager vulnerability. I was able to find and exploit it by basically injecting myself into the process and then using that process to attack the source. The typical like all that check the client. Now, talk this up. You know, you've guys seen my presentation, one of the things is that I always tell you, you don't deliver stuff with the right? You have to do automation. And, and the most important thing is you have to do automation of security vulnerabilities. So the way I want to present this vulnerability to developers of Stock Trader is not this. Right? This is already better because this is actually a use case of actually finding the problems. The way I want to show it is I want to show it with unit tests that look like this, right? So these unit tests are basically, come on, we're a little up. And, and these unit tests are basically um, unit tests that pass on security vulnerability and fail on fix, right? So, so what's really cool about this is, oh, I don't have a sharper. Uh, but, so, oh, I, oh, I do. I do. Cool. Uh, so here are unit tests, right? And, and what they do is they are unit tests that are designed to pass on vulnerability and pass on fix. Right? And, and this is very powerful because it allows me to say, yes, you still have vulnerabilities, 
no, you haven't fixed them, right? And and so you can see, right? So so the idea like that those are designed that when when you have a vulnerability, this unit test will actually pass. So you can put this part of your development life cycle, right? So these are a unit tests that actually pass when there's a vulnerability, and these ones will fail when the vulnerability is there, and this will pass when you fix it. So your job is to make sure that that guy goes red and that guy goes green, right? So <coughs> In a nutshell, this is kind of what you can do with O2 Platform. You can automate the security knowledge and the workflows that the security consultant or the professional has, right? And and if you want, you know, information about it, you can download it. There's a whole bunch of stuff on the um, on already that book. My blog is probably the the best source at this moment while we normalize a lot of this information. And you know, my blog has also lots of Lots of really powerful stuff on the platform. You can see there's 210 posts, right? So you can basically find all sorts of stuff in there, including you know how to do you know all sorts of Java manipulation, handles manipulation, uh, Windows hijacking, etc. Including if you want to do SX, that's the other thing you can do. And um, and actually, just to finish off my last demo, which is a great part trick, is one of the things I figured out was that if you go to the main O2 platform. You know, I figure out that there is um, uh, basically, um, you know, Windows. Uh, I actually, you know, okay, this probably doesn't make sense for some of you here, but you know, in Windows, everything is a window. So what it means is that one of the things you can do is you can hijack Windows, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm basically going to use this tool to go in here and hijack a C sharp um, little GUI. So there you go. See, so that now thinks it's here. I'm also going to hijack Chrome, so here's my Chrome, and um, and I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to basically hijack the whole of Chrome. So uh, let's take that. There's there's Chrome, so you can see my Chrome window actually is in here again, fully alive. You could also hijack Visual Studio, so you can go in here and you can say, oh Visual Studio, could I please have that solution, dude? Right, and there you go. Actually, let's grab the whole Visual Studio for now. So actually, all the Visual Studio is in here, and you can see it's actually pretty cool, right? And you know, just wrapping up, you can probably also hijack Command Exe. So uh, I can come in here and I can hijack Command Exe, and now I got my Command Exe in there, which you know still thinks on the other one. See, so it's which is pretty cool, right? Uh, which is a cool research. I've done some pretty cool demos with this stuff. So. And that kind of wraps it up. So there's a O2 platform mailing list. So if you want to be involved, please, uh, you know, go go there. And um, and that's kind of I think that's it. Do you have any any questions? So the mailing list you can subscribe from here, or you can subscribe from the um, main OWASP website. And by the way, uh, I'm I'm trying to revamp a little bit the OWASP pages for the platform. So if you guys want to help, it would be great. And um, and basically that's it. Any final questions? Kate, any questions or we good? Okay. So sorry, I sorry no Dennis. Questions. I so actually, since actually. Cool. All right, I can hear you now. Yep. So we're we good. We're good. Thank you very much. No worries. All right. See ya.